हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम टू ग्रामर ग्रोव इंग्लिश वेर यू विल बी लर्निंग इंग्लिश ग्रामर वोकेबलरी एंड लिटरेरी टेक्स फ्रॉम योर सिलेबस टूडे वी आर गोन डिस्कस द पोअम डस्ट ऑफ स्नो बाय रॉबर्ट फ्रॉस्ट विच इज इन योर क्लास टेन सी बी एस ई सिलेबस द पोअम इट सेल्फ इज वेरी शॉर्ट एंड सिंपल बट येट इट हैज अ डीपर मीनिंग टू इट इट शोज हाउ नेचर कैन ट्रांसफॉर्म लिटरली एनी थिंग इट टॉक्स अबाउट नेचर हीलिंग पार एंड हाउ इट कैन हेल्प अस ह्यूमेंस Without further ado let's look at the poem The way a crow shook down on me the dust of snow from a hemlock tree has given my heart a change of mood and saved some part of a day i had rued That's it that's the poem it's very short So first of all let's take a look at the very last line of the poem and saved some part of a day i had rued Okay so here i is the poet or the narrator so he is saying that he was having a bad day he had rued the day rued means regretted what happened was that one day the poet was having a really bad day nothing was maybe going according to his plan so he was out in nature he was beside a hemlock tree and the tree itself was covered in snow now all of a sudden there is a black crow it does something maybe it sits on the branch of the tree or maybe it tries to readjust its position on the branch we don't know that but the crow does something and it makes the branch of the tree shake okay and the snow dust fell on top of the poet as a result and when the snow fell on him his mood instantly became better he was having a bad mood previously but when he experienced the snow dust when the snow fell on top of him he became cheerful he became happy he thought that oh now that this has happened this is a very happy thing for me so the rest of my day will not go as bad the rest of my day is saved from a foul mood now why is the poet talking about a crow and a hemlock tree why suddenly mention these two elements out of all the other things in nature why a crow why not any other bird usually in european countries a black crow is a sign of bad luck it is a bad omen so is a hemlock tree a hemlock tree is a poisonous tree so therefore it is considered very inauspicious it is thought that it can bring you misfortune and whenever you see a black crow that means that something bad is going to happen those are considered to be negative elements of nature but here we see that the same crow and the same poisonous tree is helping the poet in lifting his mood okay the poet uses the example of a crow because he wants us to show that a black crow is not a sign of bad luck it is not a bad omen at all it is what we humans like to think but it is not true it's just a bird it is a part of nature a hemlock tree even though it is poisonous it is just a part of nature that's it a crow is not actually going to harm you in any way these are just superstitions or preconceived notions that we humans have the crow and the tree are just agents of nature It is us people who are superstitious and we see them as negative elements otherwise they are just part of nature nothing else you know in india also there is a superstition of a black cat that whenever a black cat is crossing the road you must stop where you are you must wait a few moments before you go on your way otherwise it can bring you bad luck accidents might happen we don't really know if it's true but people say that it is people like to associate black cats with extreme bad luck But obviously it is not true a cat is just an innocent creature so is a crow and a tree they do not actually harm us it is just our preconceived notions and poet here is trying to break that same preconceived notion that we have he is trying to deconstruct the superstitions that we hold in ourselves and uh, you know it is quite ironical a crow is usually considered to be a bad omen yet the same bad omen is helping you become happy okay that is quite ironical so as humans we must not take things for granted uh, usually we don't care about a crow we don't even consider it as a bird we don't really care about trees okay but these are all part of nature and these things should not be taken for granted The poem shows that nature can cure anything and everything. It talks about the supremacy of nature. The snowfall instantly makes the poet happier and it makes the poet realize that maybe he was dealing with a very petty problem. We don't know that what problem he was facing, what had happened for him to be in a bad mood. We don't know any of that, but the poet realizes that it can be easily cured by nature. 
a crow it is a creature which is usually linked with negative elements of life yet the same thing is bringing the poet happiness and changing his mood therefore this so called negative element is helping the poet heal now let's take a look at the poetic devices or literary devices of the poem first of all the rhyme scheme of this poem is a b a b c d c d it is an eight line poem and if we take a look at the poetic devices we have alliteration we have assonance inversion and enjambment now what is alliteration alliteration is the occurrence of the same letter or sound at the beginning of adjacent or closely connected words so in any line whenever there are words that start with the same letter okay or maybe the same sound and those words are placed closely together or maybe they are sitting side by side there it is called alliteration and here we see alliteration in two places first in the line has given my heart and in the line and save some part here has given my heart has heart both start with the letter h so this is an example of alliteration and in the line and save some part we have saved some s s both the words start with s and they are sitting side by side so this is another example of alliteration next we have inversion what is inversion when the structure of a sentence is changed by the poet to create rhyme this is called an inversion okay now can we really change the structure of a poem usually yes we can poets can use this thing called poetic license where a poet is allowed to change the structure of a sentence structure of a poem in order to create rhyme okay so they can change the structure they can change the spelling of certain words to create the rhyming effect in a poem and when you change the structure you usually call it an inversion okay and here in stanza 1 we can see an example of inversion the way a crow shook down on me the dust of snow from a hemlock tree here the sentence structure has been altered quite a bit if we say it like a normal sentence it will go like this the way a crow shook down the dust of snow from a hemlock tree on me next we have assonance assonance is where we see vowel sound throughout a line now here we are talking about sound all right whenever we see vowel sounds throughout a line in a poem that is an example of assonance in stanza 1 uh, line 2 we have shook down on me okay here o sound is very prominent shook down on okay there is a uh, quite a bit of o sound present here and this is a case of assonance and lastly we have enjambment what is enjambment it is a literary device wherein thoughts and ideas are carried over to the next line without any pause so in case of enjambment we keep continuing a sentence in the next line without using any punctuation sign without using a full stop or a semicolon etc there is no pause in the sentence it has been used all throughout the poem okay we see an example of enjambment all throughout the poem the way a crow shook down on me the dust of snow from a hemlock tree has given my heart a change of mood and saved some part of a day i had rued there is no comma no semicolon no full stop in between there is a full stop only at the last line of the poem we are continuing the same sentence without using a pause okay so this is a case of enjambment so that was all for the poetic devices this is again a very short poem so i hope you have a good understanding of it by now it is very simple very short but it has a deep meaning in that the poet wants us to see the healing power of nature the poet wants us to see nature for what it actually is and he wants us to discard all the preconceived notions that we have regarding nature or some specific elements of nature like a crow or a hemlock tree which are usually considered to be omnious So that is it for today's class. Did you find it informative? Let me know in the comments. If you'd like to see more such videos, subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon to get notified. Thank you for tuning in and I'll see you soon. Till then, take care.